Hey guys, today we're going to be bringing something special to you today. I've actually got an interview with Dr. Stephen Straley. He's a professor of philosophy and, and uh, religious studies at Christopher Newport University. He's written several books and uh, articles, and he's also the author of The New Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom. So it's really nice to have you today. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. All right, so can you tell us a little bit more about this statute and why it is you wrote it? Well, uh, the statute is based on the uh, uh, old Virginia statute for religious freedom that was written by uh, Thomas Jefferson and passed by the Virginia le legislature in, in 1786. Uh, we fully endorse that statute. That statute uh, believes that all people, regardless of their religious background, can participate in the public arena. What we've been concerned about is uh, recent uh, court cases ever since 1947 in Everson versus the uh, Board of Education uh, that uh, would like to relegate religious people to the bottoms of society and we also are concerned about a growing federal uh, government uh, that is, is taking over our lives and this means that uh, religious people will become uh, less and less important in, in, in the future. We think that uh, representation is a hallmark of uh, modern uh, society and we believe that uh, all religious people should be able to participate and be represented uh, in uh, society, in the public arena, through their signs and, and uh, words and symbols, whatever. So you think religion and politics are related? Oh yes, I, I definitely think they're related to each other in, in, in many different ways. If you're a religious person, of course you believe that uh, God is uh, present everywhere. Uh, he's, he's not just uh, present in the church, he's also present in the state. Uh, so we believe that God is, is omnipresent. And, and uh, second of all, we believe philosophically that it's, it's really impossible to separate religion uh, from any meaning, purpose in life. Uh, we believe strongly that our, our, our morals are based on, on religion and, and therefore uh, de facto uh, religion and government must in the end uh, come together. And, and also historically, I mean this country was founded by Puritans who strongly believed in democracy and, and egalitarianism and uh, separation and balance of, of powers. They brought these ideas to these shores in the 17th uh, century uh, and uh, so uh, their polity became the polity of our, our government. That's just one illustration historically how religion had a, a strong impact on the way uh, we think of government today. So you think our forefathers came here seeking religious freedom? Uh, it depends on the forefathers. There, there's many, uh, there, there are four basic waves of immigration to this country. Uh, according to uh, David uh, uh, Hackett Fisher's book, Albion Seed, um, some people came here fleeing persecution like the Quakers and Anabaptists who settled in the Delaware Valley region. Um, the Puritans in 1729-1730 uh, uh, came to the Massachusetts Bay uh, in 1730 massachusetts bay because they were concerned about Charles I and the fact that he had disbanded uh, Parliament. They were worried about their rights as, as Englishmen. Uh, they came during a time in which they were not persecuted, uh, but they felt that persecution was, was imminent. Uh, but others came here, uh, like the backwoods people, they came here seeking a, a better better life, uh, fleeing starvation in England. And uh, of course, uh, there are people that came to, to Virginia, and they, they didn't come here um, you know, for necessarily uh, fleeing religious persecution. They were part of the Anglican Church, the established church at that time. So people came here for various reasons, but none of them came here to rid themselves of religion. They didn't want to free themselves from religion. They wanted to practice religion in this country. Okay. Now here's the question I think most of my subscribers are probably thinking. What about the First Amendment? Doesn't that call for separation of church and state? No. No. Clearly not. Uh, not in the, uh, the Enlightenment sense of the, of the term. Uh, the First Amendment uh, simply forbids the government from establishing one church to run America, just like the Anglican Church is established in, in England. So. Uh, that was not the case. The, the idea of a wall of separation between church and state uh, did not come to the forefront in the Supreme Court until you get to 1947, where you have two uh, judges, uh, Hugo Black and Felix Frankfurter, uh, both who were essentially agnostic and atheistic in their religious affections, who wanted to create a secular type of, of government. This is something that is late, late fangled in our history, and even the court has backed off 
on that interpretation of the Constitution in recent times. Do you think separation of church and state is a way of bringing down or destroying the church? Uh, uh, definitely so. Um, uh, it comes from the French Enlightenment, basically, in the modern, modern world. Uh, 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 groups like the uh, communists, uh, groups like the Nazis, uh, wanted to separate church and state uh, so that they could use the state to provide their own ersatz a system of, of beliefs. Now, in, in Nazi Germany or in communist Russia, they actually conducted anti-Christian uh, propaganda through the state, so the, the church became more and more uh, marginalized, whereas we in America, what we do is we underrepresent uh, the church in the public arena, and, and you know very well that people who are not represented in the public arena become more and more uh, inferior. Uh, uh, Americans think that uh, this country came about in the 18th century through certain founding fathers and they skip the religious milieu that was so important in establishing our fundamental beliefs in this country. That's just an, uh, one example of how church and state creates a certain inferiority, uh, separation of church and state creates a certain inferiority among religious people. Should the government remain neutral in religious matters? Well, uh, very few people in this uh, post-Kantian, post-modern world uh, think of anything as, as neutral. Everybody brings certain perspectives to bear when they talk about the world, um, when they talk about this, this, this or that. Uh, so there, there really is no such thing as neutrality to begin with. Uh, when you teach things, you re represent a certain perspective. Uh, teaching the theory of, theories of Darwin is not something neutral towards uh, all religious uh, people. Obviously, there are religious people that are very offended by uh, Darwin's uh, uh, theories. Uh, it goes against their interpretation of the, of the book of Genesis. Uh, but you wouldn't want to limit these people from speaking. Uh, no, you, you want a forum in the public arena that will allow people to express their ideas. I know some atheists can be offended when you mention religion in a public forum. Do you think that mixing religion and politics may just breed social um, discontent or maybe even cause a war? Um, I think uh, religion has this uh, omnipresent force in it, and it's involved in whatever war a person has. Uh, everybody brings their values, uh, their purpose, uh, their affections uh, to that war that I think are based upon religious uh, principles. So uh, to say that uh, war is caused by religion is somewhat of a, of a truism uh, because all wars uh, are representing someone's, uh, someone's ideals. Uh, we do, however, have this false notion when we believe in church-state separation and, and it's really part and parcel with believing in this theory that somehow the church causes unrest in, in society and, 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 and secular a society would be would be free from unrest. Well, I've just uh, talked about in the 20th century the Nazis and the communists. There, were, uh, there's no greater example of secular atheistic uh, societies that bring about uh, tremendous bloodshed. 50 million people alone uh, died in World War II because of the communists and the Nazis. Why does religion need to be in the public square? Why can't it just be a private relationship between you and God? Well. Um, you, it's as old as the Ten Commandments that religion just doesn't relate vertically, it also relates uh, horizontally. Uh, people act in accordance with their uh, concept of what is, is ultimate. If you think like a Christian that God is love, uh, then the admonition is for you to act in loving ways towards your neighbor. You can't in the end separate those two realms. The two belong together. If you are going to let religion into the public forum, then how are you going to differentiate? Like, do you have to allow each person or each religion to have equal time? Um, well, it is always difficult to represent people in the public forum. That's why it's best to reduce the size of government as much as possible so you can accentuate the freedom of the uh, citizenry. So, uh, Less government is always better if you really believe in, in religious freedom. Uh, but if you had to represent er everybody uh, in everything you present by the government, uh, then you would have to shut down the government uh, completely. Uh, we at uh, Christopher Newport University, for example, we have a religion department that doesn't represent everybody. We don't have a Mormon teaching. We don't have a Jehovah's Witness uh, teaching. We don't even have a Catholic or a Baptist teaching. Catholics are, represent the largest denomination here in America. Uh, a Baptist, the largest Protestant denomination. Uh, in, in America. So uh, it's impossible to represent everybody 
uh, in each individual instant. Uh, if you wanted to have a dis religious display, and let's say hypothetically you tried to represent everybody, really in the end all you're representing is a multicultural religion, uh, not necessarily the religious affections of, of everyone. I think if it's uh, Hanukkah, you can put up a menorah and you don't have to concern yourself with representing everybody at that particular moment. All right. Well said. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks so much. <laughs> if you guys like the interview style, then let me know in the comment section. And as always, test everything, hold on to the good.